Good morning. I welcome you to the Outer Bayou United Methodist Church, and it's great to have this opportunity to worship with you. And I want to say happy Thanksgiving. And I, Thanksgiving, yes, give thanks. And you have opportunity to just stay after church for our meal. And it's not in the bulletin, but uh, I was informed that they've added noodles to part of the menu. So if you like those noodles, uh, stay for the meal after church as well. Our trustee, uh, Chairperson Jim, has an announcement about our North X roof. Uh, good news uh, for those of you that have been put up with uh, leaks in the North X roof for the last uh, how many years? Uh, it's coming to an end. Uh, finance approved the uh, re-roofing of the North X area and the area over uh, the pastor's office. Uh, we've made the down payment. Uh, we're waiting on a start date. So that's good news. By the way, that's still an open fundraising project, so uh, any donations toward that uh, would be greatly appreciated. Also on behalf of the trustees, thank you. Um, we had planned to put the luminaries up th today. Uh, we're not gonna do that. It's a little chilly out there. I think the ground's probably froze. Uh, so we're going to do it on Tuesday about 1 p.m. Uh, so anybody that's uh, uh, led to help, come on over. It should only take about an hour, an hour and a half. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Go ahead, Lisa. Good morning. I have some opportunities for you guys to give of your resources and time. Um, the Thanksgiving boxes. Um, are ready to be picked up today. I wanted to announce that first, but we do need some more food for Christmas boxes. Um, if you um, feel led to bring in any non-perishable food item that we can put in those boxes, that would be appreciated. Um, you can just put it in the fellowship hall. You'll see the tables covered in yellow. Um, also, people can still sign up for Christmas boxes. It's out on a sign-up sheet in the Narthex. <coughs> Um, uh, we will be in the Narthex after service today to pick up the Thanksgiving boxes. And the other opportunity I have is uh, the community meal. Um, we did have uh, Sue Tormacy would get uh, about 20 meals and deliver them in the Navarre <coughs> Village area. And she is no longer able to do that. So we're reaching out to find out if there's anybody from the church that would be interested in taking those meals and delivering them. Um, any details, you know, that can all be worked out, timing. Um, there's, there's really no specifics on that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and talk to Cheryl Seward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jody, did you want to make your announcement now, please? The choirs, church choirs, are sort of like the old parable about stone soup. We start with a pot of water, and somebody brings potatoes, and somebody brings carrots and beans, and, and before you know it, you have a wonderful soup. But it depends on people, freely and willingly, bringing their ingredients to add into that. Uh, I never want to be a nag, but we have a lot of fun up here, and we we need members to join into us. We can make beautiful music if we have two people up here, but um, we definitely could use more. We're, th we're trying to think creatively, and if our Thursday night meeting time is impeding anybody, let me know. We're, um, we're taking a hard look at changing things around to see if we can make a choir accessible to the most number of people and build our numbers back up. Um, it's sort of been hard to get people back into the routine after the pandemic, but uh, we are determined to do so. So if you, if you have musical ability, if you like to sing, or if you think that you'd like to join the choir and you don't have a lick of musical training, anybody who's willing, we will take your potatoes and we will put them in our soup. <laughs> so for right now, we're meeting on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. Uh, there's some discussion about maybe moving that to a Tuesday. Okay. Thanks, Jody. But also, after the meal, the hanging of the greens will take place. So anyone that can stick around and help hang some of those decorations, uh, see Michelle Fike and others that are getting started on that. And we'll get ready for Advent. 
next Sunday already, Advent begins. And also tonight, uh, I've got a free moment, uh, the Thanksgiving service, community Thanksgiving service will be at the full United Methodist Church. Um, Pastor Carl will be bring the message, and that's part of our fearless clergy, clergy gathering. So know that you're welcome to join us there, 7 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow your bulletins, our website, Facebook for all other announcements, times, and activities, and church events. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather this morning, I pray that our hearts would give the, you the opportunity to reveal those things to us that are from your hand, and that we would give thanks, and that we would worship with an extra gratitude and an extra, extra uh, just a intensity of thankfulness today for the opportunity uh, to be one with you, Lord, through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we know that uh, there's many that are not able to be with us today. We just ask your blessing to be uh, with them as we will be thinking of them. We lift them up in our prayers. We pray for healing and recovery and uh, energy to be restored. And Lord, we look forward to the next uh, time that they can be with us uh, in worship and in church activities throughout the week as well. So Lord, allow your hand uh, not only to hold us, but to be upon us as we worship you today. And in Christ's name I pray, amen. Let us join together by standing and singing our first hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. join me in the call to worship. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. 
trees planted by streams of water that yield their fruit in season and their leaves do not wither the wicked are not so but are like chaff which the wind drives away for the Lord knows the way of the righteous turn or sing it our next hymn this is my father's world God is still in control, would you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. You may be seated. I'll share with our young people if they'd like to come down front for a moment. Good morning. Can you tell me what, what this is? What's it? Cranberry sauce. <laughs> Have you ever had that before? No? Uh, so you don't know what it tastes like? No? How about you, Lucas? You didn't like it? Why not? Kind of like sour? No? Just didn't taste good. What about you, Grace? What do you think? You've ever had any? You think maybe you've tried it, but it didn't leave a lasting impression, did it? No. So it's one of those things. It's kind of funny how it comes in the can. If you look close here, the label's on it. You know, we could say the can's upside down because you'd open it from this end. And they even tells you that. Open other end. So you know that something wrong with it. You know, <laughs> if they got to put it in a can upside down, they got to put the label wrong, and, the, and they give you the direction to open the other end. So I did have to check, research that. And the idea is they pack it that way so... Up here, this air, there's this air bubble. You open that up, and you get a butter knife, slide in beside it, and it all kind of just loses that vacuum suction, 
and it just comes out in a, a nice round shape of the can. And the thought is you'd want to slice it and eat it in slices like that. And I'm sure there's somebody here that likes it. Anybody want to admit to it? Well, more than what I expected. You know, so there's a handful of people here that like it. But uh, there you see the slices there. But, you know, to me that just seems like awful, a lot of processing. Even though it says no artificial co colors, flavors, or preservatives. Well, it must be the way God made it. So, but anyways, uh, we go through life and we have things that we may have to do, some responsibilities that they, they might be kind of like cranberry sauce. You got to deal with it, maybe deal with it weekly or daily. What would be some of those things that you just got to deal with, like making your bed, making the bed, picking up after yourself, taking out the trash, you know, and, and you know, you know, I don't know about your trash man. They're, they're kind of particular. They want the trash can in a certain place. They want the lids on and, and all those type of things. Um, have you had to deal with that yet? No? Well, I think some of these people out here probably had to deal with that. You know, but then there's other things. There's like laundry, dirty laundry. You know, you got to take that to the laundry room or put it in the basket. And then somebody's got to wash it, dry it, fold it. That's my mom. Your mom? Okay. <laughs> Thanks to moms. That's me. Uh, th thanks for whoever does laundry in your family. But, you know, just kind of like cranberry sauce. It's just it's not something you really want to mess with and deal with, but we have to, right? So let's think about what's something good that you're going to have on Thanksgiving. What's your favorite thing, Colt? Probably the turkey. Turkey? Turkey. turkey. What do you think, Grace? Desserts, rolls, pumpkin pie. pumpkin pie, a lot of good stuff, right? Yeah, dirt pudding. Yep. And so that, that's a lot more enjoyable to look forward to, isn't it? And we have those type of things in our life as well, uh, things we look forward to. Um, holiday parties, anybody having Thanksgiving party at your school? You know, Christmas parties, birthday parties. You know, of course, families getting together on this Thursday, I mean, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just, it's, all, all, it's really a, just a party all week, right? Mm -hmm. And then we get into Advent, and then we got just like six weeks of Christmas party, right? Christmas parties, work parties, gatherings, and all those type of things. So what, what I guess I'm trying to say is sometimes we got to take the cranberry with the good stuff. Mm -hmm. We got to do the trash to so have you know, a clean house or a clean bedroom. We gotta do the laundry to have clean clothes, right? Mm -hmm. So we all gotta work together. You have to work with your family. I gotta work with my family. We gotta work together as a church, don't we? A lot of things, uh, there's gonna be some things we don't like. We could throw them in the classification as cranberry sauce or whatever it is, but there's still responsibility and it takes all of us working together, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's pray. So, Father God, we know not every day is a Thanksgiving dinner. We don't always have feasts, and we don't always like everything that may be set before us at times. We don't like all the responsibilities that we have to deal with. But when we walk with you, Lord Jesus, we are reminded that there will be challenging moments. Not everything will be perfect. We will have suffering. We'll, we will have struggles. But, Lord, we know that you are there with us every step of the way. So we give thanks for your presence with us, especially here today, Lord. And I just once again lift up our young people. I ask for your hedge of protection to be around them as they have a short week at school this week and traveling, family get-togethers, family activities. And, Lord, may they you know, glorify you, you know, with all they do and say. And may you be glorified, Lord, in what the church does and how the church serves and, and all that we do, Lord, that we do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here today. And thank you, teachers.
as we prepare our hearts uh, for a prayer, um, I'll pray for you cranberry sauce people. Uh, I'll underline that in my bulletin. But uh, as you notice, Greg and Vicki not here today under the weather. A lot of other individuals, family members, neighbors, loved ones, colds, illnesses, missing school, missing work, and uh, of course, missing church as well and Sunday school. And I don't know about you, uh, I have family members, children, they, they hate missing church and Sunday school. Uh, they do anything to be here, but uh, we don't want them coughing on everyone. But they are feeling better, they got the medicine, and uh, praying for your family members as well as you go into the week of family gatherings and get togethers. Continue prayers for Regina. Uh, she had, you know, getting uh, some care and therapy and things, and then uh, this week uh, come down with COVID. So she's dealing with that as well. Betty Whitmer, she's down at Hennis, recovering from her um, broken hip and surgery. Um, continue prayers for Betty. Wayne, uh, Wayne was to get home uh, with Kim on Friday. Uh, she sent me a message. So Wayne, uh, continued prayers for him. Uh, prayers for uh, families that have lost loved ones. Uh, if you remember Stacy Freed, uh, our one-time youth leader, uh, her, she came back from Minnesota with her family, her grandmother that she took care of some at the nursing home passed away and uh, we had that grave site on Friday afternoon. Uh, so continue prayers for them and as they make their travel back to Minnesota, uh, he's leaving last night. Uh, also prayers for uh, Cheryl Seitz, uh, hospice has been called in and just one of those things you're you're do, working you know, for her preaching one day, next day uh, you're, you're calling in hospice and uh, she's working with uh, Pastor Chris Taberki that was part of our congregation planning a funeral service and she uh, talked to me yesterday and she, her plan is have the service here. Uh, she's requested some things and I talked to those people that she's requested to be part of that service and of course her district superintendent and some other clergy as well. So uh, pray for Cheryl, pray for a husband, and this time of transition for them as well. Tough, you know, when these things happen so quickly. Also, another extended family uh, within the church, uh, because the Methodist Church is a connectional system. Uh, family back in the Melmore Tiffin area, uh, done uh, two other funerals for them, and they've called and. Uh, Wednesday, I will be back in that area doing another funeral and graveside for them. So, um, all, you know, I'm just amazed by families, the things they remember, and when they want to get a hold of you, they, they find you, and they continue to call and ask that I do these gravesides and do these funeral services for them. And I just know it's just part of God's plan and way he works these things out. And I just trust that as we continue to grow together spiritually and continue in ministry together, that, you know, we're still building those relationships as well in the name of Jesus and life moments. And that is what life is all about, those life moments, amen? Because at the end of the day, end of the week, whenever you take your last breath, whenever I take my last breath, it's not gonna matter what church you went to. It's not gonna matter what denomination you was part of. It's gonna matter if your name is written in that book of life. As they look in that book of life, checking you in at the gate, is your name gonna be written in there as the one who knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So that's what's gonna be important on that, on that last breath that you take. And so let us remember that as we go forward and do ministry as the Otterbein United Methodist Church. I know you have other needs and concerns continue to follow our you know, prayer chain it's always available you text me text michelle text doris we'll get it on the prayer chain and uh thank you church for being a praying church in that way so i invite you yes okay judy price passed away. Thank you for sharing. 
So that's, yes. Right. Mm. Prayers for healing of Terry's mother, um, stitches and a couple broken vertebrae. Yep. And where she's staying now. She's at your house. Thanks for sharing. I mentioned thanks for the prayers for my dad as well. He's in Grant Hospital with uh, infection in his gallbladder, and they're trying to decide how soon to take the gallbladder out. So it'll be eventually. Don't know if it's going to be real soon or if they got to get that infection down. So, of course, that's going to change some Thanksgiving activities for our family as well. So. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. We'll I invite you to pray personally. You can bring, the, bring it, anything to the altar right where you are. I will pray. And then I'll invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer at the end as we close together. Those on Facebook, feel free to talk to our online hosts. And let them know your joys, concerns, needs. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, there at our website, uh, drop down menu. There's a place to submit prayer concerns as well. So we have a lot. So let's put them in the Lord's hands today. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come to you on bended knee pray that as we realize how fortunate and blessed we really are here in this country and in this community and in this church, how your loving and giving hand has poured out so much. We have experienced so much of your work, Lord, over the last few years. We've seen so many come to be part of this family because of your presence, because of who you are, Lord, and because of your work in each and every one of us. So we give thanks. We give thanks for the many financial blessings and giving and resources that you have made available to this congregation. And once again, as we pull together for this rough project, we pray and we know that you will provide we pray for the contractor who will be and the company taking on this project. We pray that it will be the last time that this roof needs to be redone and that it would be no longer any leaks or problems or complications. So we ask for your hand to guide theirs and to take care of these things. And we pray that you would continue to guide us as good stewards of what you've entrusted to this church the properties, the activities, the ministry, and even the ministry that is yet to be done. Lord, it is your ministry, it is your work. So give us the holiness and the holy hands and the holy boldness to walk faithfully and to live in obedience unto the guidance and direction of thy holy word. And as your living word guides and directs us, that we would be a living ambassador for our Lord and Savior. And Lord, even as we live, we know that this earth is not the final destination. And we are reminded of this often as these human bodies at some point in time are no longer able to do what they were created to do. But yet within us, Lord, you created us to be eternal. And also with Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can have that joy abundantly, even when these bodies are not working as they should. Lord, you've heard the list of these individuals that uh, need a special care and special atten attention at this point in time in their lives. And as a great physician, we lift them up to you, Lord, and ask for your will to be done. 
We lift up these families who lost loved ones, just as each and every one of us have at some point in time. And the time will come when we will experience more loss. Loved ones will go on before us. And we won't be ready, but we pray that they will go and be with you, Lord, and that you will comfort, comfort us through the grief and sorrow. So, Lord, on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, remind us and help us understand that you, Lord Jesus, that you, Christ, you are the king. And as our king, we can put our full trust in who you are and what you will do because it is for us, because you love us. And we thank you for that love, Lord, and we give thanks. And I ask that you'd hear our voices now as we pray together the holy prayer that you have given and provided for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for praying with me and those watching and listening as well. Uh, continue to pray for one another and for each of our families as we have this holiday week upon us and head into Advent. Also, again, you know, we've had an amazing year as a church financially, and you continue to give faithfully, and I give thanks and praise for your faithfulness, church, and your commitment and dedication to this ministry and to the projects that uh, come before us and things that need to be taken care of. And, but on this Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving, think back, you know, November 1621, over, over so many years ago, when those pilgrims, those pilgrims gathered together, and for what they had, they were thankful. They were thankful. They've experienced so much. They had traveled. They'd come to a new land, starting fresh. There was no hotels, no buildings. Everything had to be brought together, constructed, and kind of like that stone soup. They all had to work together, amen? Some were carpenters, some were blacksmith, some were farmers, some provided protection. But yet, they began to build communities, they began to make relationships with the, those that people that lived here right, when they arrived, and they had this gathering at first Thanksgiving. We don't know exactly all that they went through, but we can imagine, and I can't imagine waking up on a cold morning like this, you know, in a covered wagon or in a lean-to or in some, some other type of form of shelter, but they did, and they still gather together to be thankful. And as we gather together, I pray that even in our struggles, in our life experiences, that we take time to be thankful every day. So as we think about this, let's stand, sing the doxology with an attitude of thanksgiving, uh, unlike uh, any other Sunday, and then I'll offer a prayer of thanksgiving. So let us stand. O oh Lord, with our hands open and our hearts laid out before you and our lives given unto you, Lord, 
We are thankful for Jesus being our Lord and Savior. We are thankful for the opportunity to be blessed in so many ways. But may we also understand that it is important for us to look for opportunities to be a blessing. And in being a blessing, things turn right around upon us and then we're blessed once again. So I just pray that we would live with that thought and live with our eyes open and with that spiritual attitude. Who or how can I bless someone today? Because Jesus, my Lord and Savior, has blessed me. So Lord, as we give back to you, I pray we do so with grateful and cheerful hearts. And I would ask once again, Lord, for you to bless the gift and the giver, for it is unto you. And may you receive all the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite the choir to share with us today. Thank you, choir.
morning's scripture reading comes to us from Luke 9, verses 18 through 27. Once, when Jesus was praying in, a private, in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed. And on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must decide, deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whomever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of many when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and his holy angels. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Here ends the reading. Amen. Thank you, Dale. Let us pray. O Lord, we come together before you and with your word, in whom we know Jesus Christ is the one who knew and who knows the most about suffering. Father God, we are thankful when we are protected from suffering. Suffering, Jesus chose. Suffering, Jesus accepted, and he took it upon himself. And we ask why. But Lord, we realize it was for our redemption because you loved us. Lord, we are slow to give thanks for the worldly things. These worldly things that one day will become junk and they'll find their way into the landfill. Lord, I pray we will give you thanks and praise every day for the eternal things. Today, Lord, remind us, remind us that to follow Jesus, we must at times choose the path of suffering. And what does that look like for us today, Lord? We ask for your help. Lord, help us. This is our plea, and this I pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. As we think about this today and we think about all the turkeys that are being prepared this week, and not one of those turkeys ever asked, never said, what's in it for me? What's Thanksgiving, what's in it Thanksgiving for me? The turkey never asked. And I don't know if there's anyone in your family that fights over the turkey legs or different parts of the turkey, but imagine majority of us like that white meat that they call a part of the breast. But as we think about this, you know, I've raised a few animals over my lifetime, and as I have made some observation on the farm and looking at those different animals, and the kids have now raised turkeys as 4-H projects for over for the last couple of years. Uh, turkeys are different. I'm not going to say they're very smart, but they do like their food in a container. They like that ca- container to be clean. They, they, they like the food to be dry. But yet they still spill their food. They still make a mess of things. They even get the container messy at different times of day and different, for different reasons. But do you know that food that they spill and get in different places, they just let it lay. They're just wait there till you come and clean that container and you refill that container with new, new food. Now this really irritated me because you know I, I, I like those chickens, they just scratch and claw and eat all day long wherever they go, but not these turkeys. They don't do that. They would kind of refuse to eat unless it's in that container. We do know that there will be a t- one turkey pardon this week. The President of the United States has done that for quite some time now. 
it's to symbolize the start of Thanksgiving. And it, as I read up on this, thinking about all the other turkeys that have gone to the freezer and will be going to the kitchen sink and all the different methods of thawing them out, soon to the oven or soon to the deep fryer. The turkey never asked, what's in it for me? As men and women, if we take, we take that word attachment and we take the word suffering and we hear them together, our minds, our humanness says, no, never. We don't want to be a part of that. We don't even want to talk about it. Those things should never be together. But first, they, they are. First, we, if we take the word attachment, we think about all the good things, you know, sweepers that come with 10 or 20 attachments, you know, all those kitchen aid things for the kitchen and all the kitchen tools, all those attachments. We got attached garages. We got attached sunrooms. We got attached decks. We got all these things that we, we can relate to and we do alike. We like those type of attachments. And even when they're relational, family and friends and church, co-workers, we like those attachments. But then we think of the word suffering, and it just immediately goes south, doesn't it? Immediately we think about the negative, the sorrow, the hurtful things, and the pain that comes. We do not like suffering on any, any level at any time or for any purpose. Even those athletes or coaches that push the, the no pain, no gain, you know, slogan, it's really never that fun to have to condition in such a way to, to gain strength and muscle. But yet, the outcome is good for that muscle, that smaller waistline, or that new pant size that you can't wait to get the store to buy, the smaller size, you know, not going the other way. But more often than not, we are faced with this suffering. We get focused on the suffering, and we can't hear any other encouraging words. We get to the point we can't even see the positive things. We, we definitely can't even remember the good things that God has done recently or, you know, in the past year. Because we're just so focused on this suffering that is right in front of us and before us. But as Christians, even as Christians... We, we, we need to realize, we need to realize that the people that surround us, the people we allow into our circle, the people that matter to us, they play a big part on our outlook. They play a big part on how we face the world and face life. And yes, it's in subtle ways, but as Christians, if we insist that our friendship would be a people not of God, people not of the church and not of the word. We're going to take up some of their tendencies. We're going to take up some of their theology. We might not get to where they are mocking God or calling God out or being mad at God or thinking God doesn't, doesn't exist. But all that will affect us. All of that will sway us. We will become indifferent to God in some ways and shapes and forms and thinking and heart reasoning ideas. So who do you attach to? Who have you attached yourself to in life? Those people that build up your faith, those people that hold you accountable, those people that help you draw closer to God? We all need those people in our lives. As we read from the call to worship, Psalm chapter 1. From there, we can learn, every person can learn how to follow God right then and there. That verse 2 says, meditate on his word. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, he meditates day and night. Day and night means meditating, spending time, reading, thinking, not just praying, talking to God, but giving yourself time to listen. You got to give yourself time to listen from God and listen from what is in Scripture. It is a holy step. It is a spiritual 
practice. It is a, another piece of the puzzle to being Christ-like, to knowing Christ so that we can be Christ-like. Attaching ourselves to spiritual practices so that we can be more Christ-like, so we can follow God more closely. Too often as men and women, what do we attach ourselves to? The wrong things. Things like titles and jobs and work, TV, shows, music, superstars, heroes, even parents, or even to our children. And the list goes on. Then we begin to feel, why am I so empty? Why do I not have any joy? Why can't I get excited for Thanksgiving? Why can't I get excited for Advent? Why does Christmas seem such like a chore? Because all these things that we attach ourselves to, the list begins to fail us. The list fails us. That list of superheroes and superstars and titles and jobs and work and businesses, that list begins to fail us. And we realize we're so empty. We're attached to all these worldly things, but yet they pass away and we're still here and we're still empty. Those worldly things, they turn away from us. Those earthly things, those worldly things, they even reject us at times. When we gave it all, when we gave it our very best, when we gave it all, pouring ourselves into it, and we put into the wrong thing. And then that wrong thing turns around and bites us, rejects us. And in those moments, in those moments, everyone sees what's really going on. They see what we have put our trust in. They see what we have put our faith in. And when they see that we've done it the wrong way, we put them in the wrong things, they also realize we're human beings too. We don't have it all together. There's no perfect person. There was Jesus and only him. That's why we need him. That's why you need him. That's why the world needs him. So we read in Luke 9 today. We read what Jesus said and what he told us. What we need to attach ourselves to. But also it leads to a different type of suffering. As Jesus said in 923, Luke 923, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily, daily and follow me. Daily means we have to do it every doggone day. Every day, we have to make that decision to follow Jesus. That decision to strap on the cross, to carry it. Every day, say, Jesus, you're going to have to help me. I can't do it by myself. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, it is a demanding life decision. So demanding, but yet so rewarding. So demanding, but yet with so many questions. but yet not the question, what's in it for me, Jesus? That's not what he's looking for. He's not looking for that type of question out of us. Today for Christians, it means that we belong. We belong to Jesus. We live to serve him. We live to fulfill his purpose of what a ministry is, sharing him not just having him as Lord and Savior, not just having that check box, that box checked off, but being in ministry, coming alongside each other as we suffer, suffer and struggle, stumble and fall at times. Because we all do. As we look at God's word, God's plan of salvation, we must deny ourselves. We must take up the cross daily. We must follow Jesus, period. Anything else is not discipleship. It's not discipleship. Anything else would be 
what the world gives us. Lip service. Telling you what you want to hear. Telling you what you want to hear and expect to hear. But the gospel news is good news. Because we have good news today. If you have not taken up your cross, you have an opportunity to do so. No reason to wait another day. You can take up your cross and begin the journey. Maybe you have traveled some with your cross and decided, hey, I'm taking a break from this. I'm not going to carry this thing anymore. So you sat it down. Maybe you sat it down this past week. Maybe you sat it down last year or a few years ago. Guess what? It's still there. Let's pick it up. Let's pick it up together. Let's travel together because we all have a cross to bear. God has given us this awesome gift, and it's called forgiveness. Forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is through his blood, and only by his blood that we are washed. There's no other way. So I encourage you today and every day to take up your cross. Strap it on when you'd rather not to. Keep it on when you'd rather set it off. Keep it on when family and friends and the world and your buddies and girlfriends are saying, I, I, forget that. Join us. Get over here. We know you want to be over here doing these things. Keep it on. Tell them, say, no, I'm not going. You join me. Try it my way for a while. Try Jesus for a while and see what you think. Try Jesus' way. The world's always going to contain three types of people, three categories. And they're always, they've always been here and they always will be. And they'll be here till it's all said and done. Three categories of people. They're going to be the saved. The people who said yes to Jesus. They're carrying the cross. They're following the Lord. There's always going to be God's people, the Israelites. God's people, his nation. And there's always going to be the lost. Those who reject Christ, those that don't accept him as Lord and Savior. The saved Christians are people who's going to trust in the blood of Jesus. They've given their lives to Jesus. They're trusting his work, his work for their salvation, and they take up the cross. The Israelites, they're always going to be God's people. They're always going to be the apple of God's eye. Scripture tells us that. Uh, Jerusalem's going to always be the navel of this world. They are the family of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, and the line of Shem, who was born of Noah. This nation, they are promised they are promised and they always have this prominent place among all the nations in the world. And Jesus is also their king too. But then there's the lost, the lost, the unbelieving, the rebellious multitudes. They're going to be always be around us. The cults, the heathen nations, other religions, even neighbors, family and even some people we may call friends. Yes, some people we're going to say they're great and they're good people, but yet they don't know Jesus. People that look to other things of the world. A future. There's a future for them as well. A future for all people. And for those that are lost, it's called hellfire they, they will appear at the white throne of judgment they will get recognized their name will be known and when Jesus says I do not know you scripture tells us right where they will be cast it's called a lake of fire it says a cross or the lake of fire Suffering and strapping on the cross, denying yourself in the name of Jesus, 
or the lake of fire. Choices. So as we think about the cross of suffering, for me, it changes the question. It changes the question. It's no longer what's in it for me, but it's what does that cross and the life of Jesus do for me? What's the cross and what's Jesus do for me? What did he do for you? What has he done for the world? A life with Jesus now means an eternal life with Jesus forever in God's kingdom called heaven. So it's about what Jesus has done, what he's doing, and how much he loves you. But he still says, you decide. You decide what you want. You can take my cross now, or there's going to be a lake of fire later. Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your holy word, and it's a living word. It is your word, and it is a word for us to embrace. And what Jesus says, Jesus means. It is the truth. He is the truth. He is the way. He is everlasting life. So, Lord, I lift up your people today. You know their hearts. If they have yet to pick up the cross, or maybe they need to turn around and pick it up again. Maybe they just need to invite you back in, Lord. Hear their prayers. And if that is you today, I invite you just to pray these words. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I'm ready to have my life and heart cleansed by your blood. I'm ready to deny myself and take up thy cross. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord and Savior. So, Father God, as we go forth today, give us the guidance that we need for the seasons that are before us. However long they may be, one day, one year, or another 50 years, whatever it is, Lord, you will give us the strength to carry that cross and you'll give us the direction to deny ourselves for your glory and your kingdom and for your ministry right here and now. This I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our closing hymn today, I invite you to stand and sing, Come ye thankful people, come.
as we sing that and we say, come Lord, come quickly, I pray that we can really mean it and that we are prepared for it because it does say at the end of the Bible, he is coming quickly. Let me have prayer and bless the food and the meal today in our gathering. And I do invite you, uh, we got plenty of food, uh, feel free. If you got something at home, save it for tonight. Join us, join us for lunch. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we give thanks for this day and your word and message for who you are, Lord God. Perfect, holy, and divine, the master and king of kings. And Lord, I pray that as we prepare for Advent, learning about this hope and joy and peace and love that came in a manger. One day, Lord Jesus, you're gonna come again, not in the manger, but in the clouds, blowing the trumpet, saying, come on home, good and faithful servants. We look forward to that day, Lord. But now we ask that you bless the food that will be put before us. Join us at these tables that have been set and, that, and within the chairs and in the fellowship and in the friendship. Lord Jesus, we thank you for joining us. May our lives reflect, may our lives meditate upon you and may we just learn more of you and become more like you. And in Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen. Meet you in the fellowship hall.